Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. It's a little chilly out this morning. Fall is, is coming in and in fact, this week, they're talking about overnight lows later on this week and being down pretty close to the freezing mark. It's just about getting to that time of firing up the old wood stove. Many of you already have. I'm a kind of a stickler and you know, if it's the pipes aren't freezing, we don't need a wood stove going, but that's just me. A little busy this a uh, few days ago. Let me show you, yes. I know, I don't have a disease. It's walnut season around here. And before any of you say anything, I know I should wear gloves, but I didn't have any gloves at my ready. And it's not gonna kill me. It will wear off. It's not a big deal. But it brings me to a point that this isn't the whole video, so just stick with me. There's more to come. Um, I've mentioned before that you can make a walnut tincture uh, that is works very, very well against radiation sickness. And so I'm going to give you that real quick because it's super easy. Your five-year-old can make it. Well, maybe not, but it's super easy. So if you want to get a pen and paper or you want to pause... As I'm telling you, I'll tell you how to make it and then a little bit of details on it. So you need green walnuts. So as they're first falling or even pick them off the tree, you want that outer husk to be as green as possible. You don't want the stuff where it starts turning black, okay? Get you a pocket knife, it needs to be sharp. Be careful because it's not easy. It's not like peeling an apple, it's pretty tough. And you peel about a dozen of those, all that green off of it, and you put it in a half gallon mason jar. Now you can put it in others, but this recipe is for a half gallon mason jar. About anywhere between 11 and 13, and I just say 12, um, we'll fill that mason jar up approximately two thirds to three quarters full. Get your cheap vodka. You're not gonna drink this stuff. So just get the cheapest vodka you can get. It needs to be at least 80 proof. Usually most of them are. And fill that jar up to about that much from the top. Put a lid on it and store it in a cool, dark place for four to six weeks and give it a shake every couple of days. And that solution will get just black as can be. It'll look like walnut sting. In a way, it kind of is. And that is what you use. Uh, you can paint that on your kneecaps every four to six hours if, if exposed. Uh, this solution, they came up with this solution and used it during the Chernobyl incident many years ago over in, well, Ukraine. And they found out years later that the people that did this did, it, did as well, if not better, than the people that were taking the tablets. And they did this because they were running out of tablets. So it's a, it's a, it's a possible solution. It doesn't hurt to have a little bit of that stored up. Uh, especially now because the little tablets are becoming harder and harder to get. There's uh, some pretty strong rumors that the federal government, maybe HHS, is buying up as much as they can. So it may be difficult for you to get some of that. Um, and it's just, it's an easy way to have it. I mean, if nothing else, you could use it for bartering and trading if things really happen. So just thought I'd throw that out there to you. Um, and so I've, I make up some every year and I've got a few gallons of it put away for a just in case. And you can do the research. I'm not gonna give you all the details of it. If you, wanna, if you don't believe me or whatever and you wanna research it, uh, there are some peer reviewed articles from years ago on this subject. What I really wanted to talk to you today about is most people are not ready for what's happening and what is to come. And I'm not talking about uh, preppers. I mean, there's certainly a lot of preppers, homesteaders, self-sufficient folks that um, aren't as ready as they probably think they are. But I'm talking about just the, the regular normies, the sheeple, whatever you want to call them. I was watching a, a video last night on a ch of a channel that I don't watch all the time. Some of you love him, some of you hate him. Sometimes he's dead on accurate. Sometimes he 
maybe exaggerates things a little too much, but it was Canadian Prepper. And the one I watched he released last night was, I think, very, very accurate. He did a good job of it. And one of the things he talked about is how he's kind of shocked that with all this talk about us being, you know, on the brink of nuclear Armageddon, I think that's the words or close to the words that the Biden used, um, that it's, it's, we're closer now than we were even during the Cuban Missile Crisis, you know, all this kind of stuff. And the reaction, and certainly there's been a buildup. Uh, there's lots of indication that our own military is, is, is getting things ready more than ever for a possible of World War III and even nuclear war. Um, obviously, Russia is, Ukraine, Europe, you know, there, there's definitely uh, some buildup. And the strange thing is, is that the American people are completely kind of tone deaf on it. They're, they're not reacting to it at all. I mean, they're upset, and some of them are online, and they take to their keyboard warring, you know, they're all these battle-hardened keyboard warriors. But as far as actually seeing any signs that the regular American is getting themselves prepared for this or have any type of uh, anxiety or anticipation, there doesn't seem to be any, which is very different from the last time in American history that something like this, you know, almost happened. And of course that is the Cuban Missile Crisis during the Cold War. Back then, there's certainly lots of stories and evidence, and some of you lived through it, that the American people reacted quite a bit to it. They, you know, rushed out and stocked up. There were stories of empty shelves. Uh, people were frantically building some type of bunker or bomb shelter. Uh, there's been movies made on this, TV shows. So it's, it's no surprise, it's no secret that that stuff happened. And yet, here we are, potentially, potentially, on the verge of something like that or even much worse happening. And <clears throat> American people just aren't reacting to it. This is something that I've talked about over the last two or three years with all this stuff that's gone on, this cognitive dissonance, this, um, you know, that people have been so desensitized to what's going on. And I think that that's been part of the reason we've seen so many things just happen, happen, happen. Some of it may have been out of control, out of their control, but I think a lot of it was orchestrated. Most of you probably agree with that. And I've said that I think one of the reasons why is to desensitize the people so that as things do really get worse, there'll be very little reaction to it. And I, I, many, many times on here, I've gone back to an article uh, that came out shortly after Biden uh, went into office. And it was an interview with one of his staff or something. I can't remember now. I think it was on Newsweek magazine. And they were spe specifically talking about the health crisis and lockdowns and, you know, increased restrictions. And they said that the that Biden and the White House were, were wanting to increase the restrictions, but they wanted to do it slow enough that people got used to it, you know, that there wasn't some kind of panic. They didn't just want to, you know, wake up one day and it's you know, China lockdown style. Um, and they said that, you know, they were waiting till the people got to where they would, they would be okay with it and they would want it. And I think that's been true with most of the things that's gone on is that it's little by little, you know, this whole economic US dollar, digital dollar thing is the kind of the same way. They're, they're just, you know, incrementally rolling it out so that people are like, well, that wasn't so bad. I mean, all the crazies on YouTube was talking about how that's gonna be the end of the world and it happened and the world's still here. And some, some YouTubers may say that. I think most of us are saying it's leading us down the path. It's just one more step, one more rung on the ladder. And that's what we're seeing is 
you know, people are just, you know, not really paying attention to it. And this is a danger as much as the danger of some level of collapse or war, whatever form it ends up taking. Because we've said this, I've said this many times, and there's been other YouTubers say this, that during some kind of collapse, however it's going to eventually play out, one of the biggest dangers and threats that we'll face is people. People that were unprepared and they've just lost it. They've, they're in panic mode. They're in, you know, they've lost all civility. And honestly, that is a threat that I worry about even more so than government or, or restrictions from the government because the people can be very unpredictable. And, you know, when they're, when they're doing what they do to protect their lives or to feed their bellies because they're totally unprepared, there's no rules to what they can do. And so that's why we should be concerned when we're seeing what's happening in this buildup. And of course, we don't know how much of it is real, like it's really happening, how much of it's orchestrated, and how much of it is just their spin on things. But the point is, is it's pretty obvious things are happening. And that's why we prepare. It's why we talk about the stuff that we do. But this factor of, you know, Americans, people that are so disconnected, they don't get it. They're not paying attention. That's where we should start to kind of be concerned with. Because the more the American people show that they're not interested in this or that it doesn't bother them, that's really the thing. The more that it shows that, you know, they're, they're not going to fall apart because this happens, I feel the greater chance of they, the, the ones the, that are running everything, the greater chance for them to continue out their plan. They know that the, the meat has been tenderized enough, basically. And we're seeing that. You know, for instance, one thing, we've been told for a year or two now, more and more how the military, all branches of the military, cannot uh, get their recruitments up to where they need to. And there's been lots and lots of military personnel loss. They've quit, they've retired. Some of them have been kicked out because they didn't get their thing. Um, but the numbers are down really low. And they're also saying that at least 25% of the eligible people for military service couldn't even get in the door because they can't pass physical or mental uh, fitness tests. And so <laughs> it's like no one's putting one, two, and three together and seeing that if we're on the brink of a global war, very possible, even if it wasn't a huge war, which it most likely would be, but let's just say it's not a huge war. War nonetheless, nuclear, all this stuff going on, the military numbers or personnel numbers are down, recruitment numbers are down, and there's not, the, the recruitment pool is shrinking, then what does that tell you, folks? That tell you, tells you that the, there's a strong possibility that a draft is in the near future. I'm not saying that it is gonna happen. I'm saying that it very well could happen. And are people paying attention to that? Nope. Not at all. If you thought about the fact that your sons and grandsons and husbands and brother and, and so on could easily be drafted. And the way things are going, I wouldn't rule out that it gets expanded and women might be drafted, especially if this becomes a very large war. And of course, we want to keep everything equal, right? Equality, equality, equity, whatever it is they call it now. And no one is upset over that. <clears throat> All of these things tell me that you and I need to be more guarded, even more ready. 
because I think one of two things could happen here. Number one, <clears throat> at some point, it's gonna get really bad, become very obvious, and the people will panic, and probably panic even more so than if they panicked little by little, kind of that trickle in panic. You know, they wait until it's by far too late and things are critically bad and then they lose it. <clears throat> and because we live in a society that isn't capable mentally, psychologically capable of handling stressors like we once were, everyone is so thin skinned and, and weak minded, or at least a lot of people, that the panic will be far, far worse. The other thing that could happen, that I think about, is <clears throat> people don't do that. They continue to just be lackadaisical in dealing with this. And again, like I said, the elites, the ones that's running the show, say, well, we've tenderized them enough. Let's just you know, go ahead and push the whole Agenda 2030 Great Reset. Because you have to understand, their globalist plans, they have to be somewhat fluid. They know what they want to do, but they, they have to be fluid in their implementation because they don't know how the people will react, things that are a little out of their control. And if they see that the people aren't really reacting and panicking to the things that are happening, and I don't know what bigger thing a person or a society would react to than you know nuclear war with one or two major nuclear powers if they don't react to that then they're not going to react to anything and until it's by far too late and so i think we have to be concerned with like i said number one that the people do finally just lose it and and bigger than anything before or or and um the powers that be realize that they've got everyone right where they want them. They've got them conditioned enough that they can just roll over us with a steamroller with all their globalist plans. <clears throat> We're setting ourselves up, I believe, for, for some pretty bad stuff happening. It may not happen. There's still people that are saying, you know what? We're not gonna go to war. We're not gonna, there's, there's not gonna be a nuclear war. We're not gonna go to war with Russia. It's very possible. I think that's that's still on the table. But we also many thought that the same way that Russia wouldn't invade Ukraine and you know this this you know they're not gonna do lockdowns, it's just a cold and and we saw what happened with all that. We should be thinking about these things and realizing that no matter how prepared we are. It's the other person that poses the greatest threat. You know, my grandfather always used to say, I'm not worried about myself driving out on the highways. I'm worried about all the other crazies out there that don't know what they're doing and are distracted. It's the same thing with this. You may be rock solid, prepared, trained, mental, physical, spiritually ready for yourself. But what about all the crazies around you that just completely lose it? And that's a, something we need to, to be aware of. And then, of course, this whole growing potential of draft. Most Americans living today don't really know anything about that because they didn't live through it. And I think it's going to, I think it has the potential of really throwing things out of, out of control chaos for a while. Folks, <clears throat> these are some of the things that we need to be working and thinking about and preparing for because it's more more than ever it's the time to get your houses in order it's time to prepare yourselves mentally physically and spiritually thank you for watching catch you in the next video